Heavy Bell from Data East was yet another top down running gun shooter that were extremely popular in 1987 when this game was released. This being a Data East game though, it did have a unique twist to separate it from the rest. Just like Data East's Midnight Resistance, Heavy Barrel used a rotary joystick. What this means is that your character would move in whatever direction you move the joystick, as you'd expect, but you can also rotate the main shaft of the joystick to spin your character around. This allows you to walk forwards while shooting in a completely different direction. This type of control method may sound strange, but it really works well. As for the main gameplay, well it's not much different than many of the other games out there, although the way you acquire power ups is rather unique. Shooting certain enemies will cause them to drop keys. These keys are required to open chests around the stage, which contain your power ups, ranging from flamethrowers to spinning barriers. The Apple II port came to us by UK developer Quicksilver. This port looks quite nice at first glance, however it soon becomes apparent that it's not that easy to play. The first issue we have is the screen by screen scrolling, which really does break up the flow of the gameplay. This on its own isn't enough to destroy the game mind you. What really makes this port a pain to play is the erratic movement of the projectiles. It's near impossible to detect which are your bullets and which are the enemies, due to the way they move. Adding the fact that the enemy and player's bullets are the same colour also doesn't help. You may have also noticed that this version is severely cut down in terms of level design. I'm not sure why as the Apple II could have easily featured all of the map sections. Looking rather nice for the dust game of its time, this Quicksilver developed port feels really nice and does seem complete in map design. There's even an intuitive control system that locks your weapon into the direction you're facing once you hold down the fire button. Things are looking good for the dust port of Heavy Barrel, but as you'd expect, there's always something to spoil the fun. In this game's case, it's the difficulty. In two player mode this is not a problem. In one player mode, the enemy AI is relentless. They move faster than you, shoot faster than you, and at times attack in massive numbers. This forces you to crawl through the stages in hope of not spawning too many enemies at once. Such a shame.
Famicom Nesport was handled by Dateys themselves, under the Deco label. Now it's easy to say that this port is rather pathetic compared to its arcade big brother, and to tell the truth, yes it is. There's next to no enemies at times, controls that you can't lock so you have to run in the direction you want to fire, and sprite flicker are plenty. Still, despite these flaws, Heavy Barrel on the Famicom is a great game that offers a lot of challenge in the world of run and gun gaming. And let's take a look at all those versions of Heavy Barrel running side by side. 